Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, featuring the titular Lord Captain Wilbur von Valencius. Very cool. Um, yeah, so last time we talked to Argenta, we talked to some orphans. They didn't like us very much, which is fine. I guess they can stay on the ship. I guess. Still haven't found where Adara is, though I haven't looked. I'll be real. <laughs> um, next, we're going to be talking to... Uh, oh, geez. Can I just double click his portrait? That's cool. Uh, next, we're going to be talking to Cassia. See what she has to say, huh? Hello. <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. Jeez, okay. Tell me about yourself. I am a part of House Orcelio, an ancient dynasty of the Navis Nobilite. Since time immemorial, our family has served to advance knowledge, pushing at the boundaries of the dark unknown. The Starway Atlas contains 2,843 routes that chart the sectors of the Segmentum Obscurus and reach all the way from the Coronas Expanse to Holy Terror. The hell is the Segmentum Obscurus? That's something I need a little tooltip on, guys. Come on. Ancient organization of noble mutant families whose genes allow them to safely guide warp vessels. Cool, cool, cool. Holy Terror, the throne world of the Imperium of Man and the original homeworld to humanity and the God Emperor. I'll listen in silence. And uniting the Imperium's thousands of worlds. House Orcelio is bound by commercial packs to houses Galeatis, Ortina, Drotus, and... There is a dark blue knot tightening on your neck, Lord Captain. I can see my reply is not satisfying your thirst for knowledge. What is it you desire to hear exactly? Navigators identify so strongly with their house. It must be difficult for you to not be able to learn on, lean on your elders. But you have my word that I will look after you. You will I'll do that. That would be most appreciated, Lord Captain. So you've never learned, lived anywhere other than Iraq Five. Hardly. According to the chronicles of the house, I was born on one of the Orcelio worlds. Vert... Vertv... Oh, what was it? Please forgive me, Lord Captain. My childhood memories are too vague. Sometimes I dream about the colorful birds that built their nests in the garden. Or the servants dressed in purple livery. Or the blue fog that rolled over the lowlands behind the palace. But everything is covered in a rosy haze. Perhaps it is my imagination, not my memory, that is painting these pictures. Perhaps it's the red eyes. <laughs> Maybe that's why everything looks rosy. <laughs> Tell me about your life on the station. My stay on the station was wholly dedicated to preparing me for my future duty. Astromancy, astrography, numerology, the histories of my house and the Imperium, as well as other disciplines. For many years, dozens of instructors tirelessly prepared me for my destiny. And once a year, Great Regent Alronto would come to the station. He would entrust his beautiful vessel to my command, so that I could master the practical aspects of our art as well. Uh, I don't want to ask her about friends. Your third eye, do you always conceal it? The navigator's open eye is baneful to whoever the warp's ruinous shine falls upon, and therefore it is the symbol of our power. We are the guiding stars of humanity, found worthy of an uncommon gift, and one of the duties that we bear is to guard our eye, even from wayward glances that may bear evil. Mm. Besides, I am aware that... Lesser servants of the Imperium may find our appearance repulsive. The Navigator Gene twists the features the rabble are used to seeing, and the magnificence of our role cannot be grasped by their feeble minds. Okay, calm down, all right. You're so smart. 
You are beautiful, Cassia. Don't let anybody or anything convince you otherwise. Who cares about the opinion of the short-sighted rabble? Uh, they can serve us and they die for us <laughs> and keep their thoughts to themselves. You do not look repulsive, Cassia. I cannot blame them. Ooh, I cannot blame them. <laughs> Navigators are mutants, albeit highborn mutants. You don't look repulsive. Perhaps my appearance does not terrify you right now, but this will not always be so. The Navigator gene is unstable. My body is going to change over time. And only the God Emperor knows exactly how. Look, okay. Your body's gonna be changing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just give her the talk immediately. Uh, what does it feel to guide a vessel through the warp? It may be difficult to describe. You see, every navigator perceives the warp differently. My mentor, Great Regent Elronto, always described his travels through the Immaterium as a journey through a vast wood with countless paths. And I, assisting him in the first voyages, futilely tried to follow his example but the wood would not reveal itself to me but everything changed when i found my own key to this mystery you see i've always brightened up my rare moments of leisure time by painting you may recall there was a workshop in my chambers as soon as i imagined the warp as a blank canvas an indescribable feeling came over me I moved the brush, going deeper and deeper into my own painting. Visions were hidden within the vibrant colors of my palette, and something inside me knew which should be brought out and which should be left behind. I woke up several days later, after the voyage was safely complete. Hmm. I notice that your love of painting is reflected in your speech as well. You associate many images with hues and colors. The Emperor graced me with a gift. I can see inner life in addition to the mundane. You cannot know that a fruit has rotten from the inside until a blade slices it in two. I can see the rot from far away. It roils like swamp mud, oozing through the bright peel. Anger and boredom, sadness and joy. Everything that people shut away inside themselves is revealed to me like colors on the canvas of my world. That's really cool. <laughs> uh, did you have any friends? I'll ask her about it. Someone you can turn to for a con for a simple conversation, not a discussion or you had another lecture. The Regent gave me a bird from a sunlit planet once. I tried to befriend it and make it sing, but for some reason, it refused and died soon after. So that would be a no. The instructors were too <laughs> respectful of my duty to my house to waste precious time on idle chatter. Aside from them, there were only servants on the station, and you know they have their vocal cords removed, so they cannot break their vow of silence. Fuck, that sucks, dude. God damn, that's horrible. And since the subject has been breached, Lord Captain, why do you not follow this honored tradition? Your decks are so garish. Uh, uh, apologies, I meant noisy. The rabble don't just chatter. Sometimes they shout and even sing. Why do you allow such a lack of restraint? Rogue traders are highborn, are they not? A ruler cannot maim his people just because it is in his power to do so. On the contrary, it is the duty of every ruler to look after his subjects. That's a pretty good one. That's top of the list right now. Uh, you may find it difficult to believe, but the practice of depriving servants of their voice is not particularly widespread outside House, house Arcelio. Uh, look at the top one. You do have a point. It's about time I made the decks quieter. I will lower the rank stripped of their vocal cord. Jesus Christ. I like the noise people make. It fills me with the life of the ship. Uh, it's my uh, duty to protect these people. Your words sound amazingly blasphemous. If a ruler's duty dictates the need for violence, would dispensing it not be their responsibility? 
I will contemplate your answer in solitude. Okay, well, you do that. Uh, how, why don't we talk about something else? You will hear no objection from me, Lord Captain. Tell me about Hor House Orcelio. I keep saying horse. <laughs> Tell me about Horse Orcelio. As the only voice of our family on this vessel, it is an honor. As long as your questions are courteous, I will answer every one of them. Succeeded. Is the Arcelio prophecy system named after your ancestor? You are shrewd indeed. My ancestor charted that route while fleeing the enemies of humanity. They say the Emperor himself was his guide because the warp expelled their vessel without a single loss. Unfortunately, the lips of those who relate this tale seep with disgusting green hubris. I think Colleen Orcelio was simply a skilled navigator. Interesting take. I take it uh, Orcelio has a rich history. Oh, yes. The navigators of the house came to the Coronas Expanse fairly recently, a mere 208 years ago. Before that, our ancestors expanded the borders of humankind's dominion for the glory of the Emperor, blazing trails to different corners of the galaxy. Who rules your house? Just as a rogue trader stands at the head of a protectorate, a Novator heads a navigator house. It is the Novator who decides where to look for alliances and which path their bloodline is destined to tread. I'll get that in a second. For our house. <laughs> The transfer of power to a successor is currently underway. In the meantime, Great Regent Auronto Orcelio is ensuring the stability of the house. A Navator. A patriarch to or matriarch that rules over the navigator house, the figurative and often biological father or mother of the dynasty. Uh, who lived in seclusion? Oh, you lived in seclusion on the closed station until Felic committed his sabotage. So that, so then you must be the navigator's successor. So says Regent Aronto. Nothing is decided yet. Some people in the house become enshrouded in rolling gray clouds at the thought of me becoming the Novator. Novator. But even more, abound with dull leaden chains. They think I am not ready for such a burden. With your permission, I would like to talk about something else. <laughs> By all means. <laughs> uh, what does your special sight reveal? Sister Argenta shines like a guiding star, inspiring resolve in those around her, seemingly inexplicably. However, I see a dark and ugly fog billow behind her, contrasting sharply with her shining light. Huh. It burdens the Sister of Battle. It drags her down. Yet Argenta herself is hardly aware of it. She's got a dark past, it seems. Seneschal Viserion is among the few whose colors are a pleasure to look at. That's Whenever good. Whenever the Seneschal speaks, heavenly crystal clarity spreads around him. And whenever he is angered, dark blue clouds condense over him. And in his rare moments of joy, a pure gleam of sunset pink caresses the souls of those near him. <laughs> Out of your entire retinue, Lord Captain, he is the only one I would trust with my life. Well, that's good to hear because I also trust the him very well. The emotions are like a maelstrom, bright, unbridled, enveloping her form like a wondrous kaleidoscope of colors and as dangerous as a twisting warp storm. The riot of colors hides the truth from my eyes. What exactly is driving this woman? Is it her own will or, or is it the immaterium, Lord Captain? She is heretical, but also I would say she's the hardest to read. So I'll, I'll take that with a grain of salt. Let's talk about something else, shall we? Oops, I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. Whoops, I clicked the wrong button. Let's talk about us, shall we? Right here? Are you sure? Let's discuss other things. Of course. Okay, I, I actually was done with you. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, yeah, I don't... 
let's see what's on the map here. Where else do we got to go? Because we've done, I think, three of the, the five things here. Yeah, one, two, three. I did these. Uh, let's go to the un unidentified void ship because I want to save this one for last because that's where all the everything is pretty much. What is this? Okay, hold on. <laughs> Helmsmaster, the Vox crackles to life. The Master Helms Re Helmsman Ravor addresses you. What we have here, Lord Captain, is not very noticeable, but there's a void ship sitting in a local asteroid field. It sure is quiet. It's like it's huddled up in there on purpose. It's not just uh, it's not like I'm surprised. The one the thing is more scrap heap. The thing is more scrap heap than ship at this point. Somebody sure went to town on it. We are registering critical damage to its hull and depressurization of several compartments. Oh, and there's incoming transmission now, too. Hear us? The voice tra Vox transmission hisses and abruptly cuts to static. Do not require assistance. Pete, do not require assistance. Copy? Keep following. They'll pass us by, won't they? For protect us. Lord Captain, I am told our augurs cannot determine the allegiance of the vessel. To be brief, there's an unidentified and badly damaged vessel within the asteroid field near Rakula. Rakio. God damn it. The fucking thing colony. <laughs> that is refusing help, which, not to pull. put too fine of a point to it, has not been offered to them. Can we establish communication? Let the vessel identify itself. Yes, Lord Captain, the connection is established. Unknown vessel, we are receiving you. Identify yourselves. I repeat, identify yourselves. For a brief moment, the Vox only hisses and snaps, and then several voices at once start shouting over the one another. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. We are done for. Oh, don't tell them. Do tell them. We're done for. This is the Thunderfang. We are one of the voices falters uncertainly and replaced by another. A merchant vessel. Do you copy? We are private chint vessel. A merchant vessel. Of course they are. Damn my stupid head. Where did I hear this name before? Thunderfang. Uh, give me a damage report on the vessel. Telemetry shows multiple hull breaches, most likely caused by the guns of a combat ship. Several compartments are leaking air. The bridge has been almost completely obliterated. Two of the engines are critically damaged. Somebody gave them a thrashing so solid they'll barely manage to limp away. Um, can I, why can we not identify you, Thunderfang? The vessel was badly damaged. What happened to you? Main gun check on my order. Aim weapons target fun. <laughs> Just immediately blast them, bro. Uh, what happened to your vessel? The Vox responds by bursting into a cacophony of sounds, words, and emotions. Someone chuckles bitterly. Another swears with some foul expletives. And another yet hisses. And yet another hisses. Furiously demanding that the others shut up. You manage to make out little from the, all the noise. We were just flying, minding our own business, straight out of the blue and opened fire. A uh, miracle we got away. Emperor protected. And then more fire. Who? Void only knows. Roasted our tail. Bombed everything. The folks, our folks, are left without help. We never got to them. Uh... Why can we not identify you? You can make out a horse and furious whispering even over the crackling of the static. Why? I don't know. What if? Surely not. The whispering dies and a clear, youthful voice cuts through the static. Our vessel is badly damaged. Damaged is preventing uh, the correct identification. <laughs> He's starting to write like me now. 
<laughs> we assure you, peaceful merchant vessel, Thunder Thing does not require aid. Stop playing games and explain what your business is here. In the time, in this time, I highly recommend the truth. Happy now? What have you done, idiot? <laughs> <laughs> it is too late now. The Vox channel is filled with anger whispers from several voices. The whispers and static drown out by a clear, slightly frightened voice. Do you copy? We are from the fellow of the void. We did not come here to loot on a different business. To help our own out of jail. Do not hurt, please. <laughs> <laughs> we already had our Kronos cleaned. How about striking a deal? Our hold is full of plunder. I mean goods. Helmsman. In case you are unaware, Lord Captain, the Fellowship of the Void is a disorderly assembly of several dozen pirate factions in the Kronos Expanse. They consider themselves above regular heretics solely because they sometimes have Vox conversations with those whom they are about to board. Were it up to me, I would make them eat a salvo from the micro cannons to shake the scum loose from the decks. They certainly deserve it. Uh, the honeyed voice of a high factor. Oh, it's this guy. Okay. Generis. Uh, I would wait on destroying the vessel if I were you, although the moral aspects of their livelihood do cause some awkward com questions. The Fellowship of the Void remains a major supplier of goods to the local market. Perhaps you will find dealing with them acceptable, especially in the situation where performing a warp jump is impossible. Prepare for a commercial exchange. Look at that. I got 14 profit factor. Agreed to the demands of rebels on the lower decks. Oh, okay. So I lost a profit factor from that, but that's okay. Fellowship of the Void. Reputation. Heavy armor. A flamer. A metal charge. Oh, a melta charge. Sorry. Camouflage rope. Robe. The wearer's ranged attacks decrease their target's dodge by 5% does not stack. And then these are, I'm assuming, uh, uh, I unlock them with better favor. Reputation. Let's look at reputation. Oh, look at this. Required cargo. Heretic trophies, Xeno artifacts, jewelry, ship components, armor kit, melee weaponry, range weaponry, fuel, and miscellaneous. Hide untradeable? Oh, there's a ton of shit. Okay, so we're... Cargo capacity. Cargo is sorted, sorting loot that is not valuable enough for a mighty rogue trader. Drag pieces of loot... To remove it from the loot screen, it will be packed into the suitable cargo space. Uh, you may withdraw loot from the cargo at any time. Selling full cargo to merchants improves your reputation with their faction. However, all loot inside the cargo will be lost. So is there flagship other notable? That's uh, all the quest items and shit. Usables. Accessories, armor, tons of fucking weapons we got. God damn. Okay. So if I just... What if I click that? They'll give me 50 bucks or 50 reputation. Do I really want to be spending it on the Fellowship of the Void? I don't even know. 111%? I don't know what that means, dude. Interesting. So I'm guessing here I can just sell off 100% of stuff. So if I go that, I get 400 bucks. Or 400 reputation. Why is this so valuable? 
Why is the fuel so valuable? Let me see here. Is that car miscellaneous fuel? It feels only at 65%. I don't know why it says over 100. Oh, do they want these things? Is that what the check mark is? I don't know. Holy gifts. Okay, this is a very interesting, interesting trading system. My boys will fetch anything your heart desires. Well, I am not really looking for it. And what is this? Points of interest, the planetoid. If I go back here and I, can I scan again and see? No, I cannot. Okay, interesting. Well, it seems that there's only one other place to go. So off we go to it. Oh, I'm falling asleep. As the ship makes its way through the star system, a strange fatigue falls over you. Your eyelids grow heavy and the quill you have been using to draw up yet another order falls from your hand. Uh-oh, I'm having nightmares. You raise your head with a start. Someone else is here in your study. You stand up and stare at the dozens upon dozens of corpses surrounding you. Among their number, you recognize the disfigured and bloody faces of those who had died on your ship's bridge and those you met in, the pre in your previous life? Oh, before you were a rogue trader. Okay. I was like, reincarnation in this bitch? Uh, how is this possible? Where are the enforcers posted to stand guard? It matters not. You are alone against a horde of heretics risen from the darkness to take your life. As if it's your own accord, the shard lying on the ground of the desk, the sole remnant of, of uh, Vortiger's weapon, slips into your hand. The metal is searing cold. The dead sway from side to side, closing in around you in a nightmarishly slow advance. Kneel before the rogue trader, your lives belong to me. Step back around, stop, I do not wish... I did not wish for any of you to die. The dead remain deaf to your words, creeping ever closer with the inevitability of death itself. You belated... You belatedly realize that your trembling hand has found the shard with when the razor sharp edge cuts into your palm. Jesus Christ, an unbearably bright light floods everything around you and you find yourself surrounded by groveling minions, their bodies shriveling in your mere presence. Your hand no longer hold a pitiful shard but a majestic and intricate weapon. A skillfully crafted sword with strange, unnerving proportions, a curved design, and an unusually, unusual hilt adorned with the image of a closed eye. The eye opens wide, revealing a gaze so ancient and dark that it steals your breath away. You have felt this gaze before, there on the bridge. And the voice that appears in your mind only confirms your guess. The tapestry is woven. The path is chosen. Accept your fate, champion. I am the sword's master, not its servant. Remember that. You feel the sword's immense weight pulling you down. You resist its will for a moment longer before collapsing to the ground to the sound of an odious laughter. The strain is such that you fear your back could break at any moment. Fog at the first dawn is hereby woven into the tapestry of your fate. Seek the second dawn in the hands of she who rises above its future dominion. Uh, the former aspirant fell, and thus the new one will become the chosen of the Weaver of Destinies. 
make mortals serve you as their god and become a vessel of the edge. What the fuck is any of that? Interesting. You awaken from the vision kneeling next to your desk, clothes drenched in sweat, and with a sour taste on your tongue, your head is ringing. And you struggle to recall those faces and the image of the sword in your hands. Only the deep cut on your palm and the bloodied shard laying on the floor remains remind you of what just transpired. Ooh, what is our subclass, basically? <laughs> Do we go dogmatic? And let the Emperor guide us? Or do we go heretical? Hmm, I'm thinking heretical, baby. Heretical plus three. You reach your shaking hand out to the shard, now slipping slippery with your blood. You wipe the metallic surface and stash your treasure under your clothes, next to your heart and soul, forever seared by the great power of the warp. Interesting. That doesn't care. Okay. Wow. So is that now in my inventory? I'm a hidden tab. I'm an idiot. Go all the way down to the bottom. No, just that cracked data slate. Uh, should I give that to him? Hmm. She doesn't have anything. She does do a lot of damage, too. She doesn't necessarily do a lot of AoE damage. I think either the sister... Because I want to put this on someone. They get additional resolve when killing an enemy, and I think... Yeah. Oh, that's so sick. Yeah, that's worth it. And then I don't have any other dogmatic followers, so... Or wait, isn't she dogmatic? She is. I might as well put that on for no reason. I don't know why it didn't change her look. I guess... Outfit settings? Show helmet on? Show backpack? Show outfit headwear? Weird. Okay. Okay. Well, that was a creepy dream we just had. Let's get back to the... Is it here? No, it's this way. Isn't it? Where the fuck am I? <laughs> back to the void ship bridge. Okay. Avalard's still here. Are these the only places I can go? Is the Void Ship Bridge and my chambers? Oh, there's this dude right here. The High Factorum, or Factotum. Uh, the copulent man in lavish clothes bows before you, not without difficulty. A servo skulls whirs over his shoulder while the fingers of his augmented hand drum against the sh sheaf of papers he is holding. I've never heard that word. <laughs> and he regards you with attentive interest th through the lenses of his magnifying implement. Greetings, your lordship. Janice Donrock, at your service. Uh, inform me you have a problem with the servitors. What happened? You see, your lordship, the ship's servitors have been malfunctioning of late. The vi they violate protocols, interrupt their tasks, observe crew members for long periods of time, and move erratically with no meaning or purpose. Janice, Janaris, Janris, Jesus Christ, Janris nervously pulls at his luxury frock coat as if it were uncomfortably tight. Had it, been, had it been a routine technical fault, I would have decided the fate of these servitors myself, but I deem it necessary to notify you. I do not wish to hide such irregularities from the Lord Captain. Oh, shit. 
God damn, I smacked the fuck out of my phone right now. <laughs> uh, if you wish to observe the servitor's unusual behavior before you decide their fate, this can be arranged. The, major the majority of the defective units have been delivered to one of the storage compartments pending your decision. I wish to take a look at the servitors before I decide their fate. Yeah, let's do that. As you wish, your lordship. Oh, what the fuck is this? Open history? Close history? I don't know what this is. I'm gonna click it. Okay. I guess I can see the, the options there. Sector data unavailable, region data unavailable, Von Felicity's flagship, lower decks, material report of a tech phenomenon that it will be observed by the Lord Captain's visit on Bay 8, KN 108, from the words of High Effect Origin. When his lordship arrived on the scene, he found the servitors in the same position that they had assumed after they had been corralled into the bay, all standing in a long spiraling line and facing the center of the sta sh strange formation. Uh, the moment his lordship crosses the threshold of the bay gay, their bodies jerked into motion as if all at once, as if obeying a command. The servitor turned the face to the lord captain. The technomats tasked with overseeing the defective units even reached for their weapons, but then the servitors went still just as abruptly staring at his lordship with vacant eyes interesting all present hold their breath disturbed by this sight we wait for the lord captain to speak his lord his lordship wilbur von valencius uh took several steps towards the servitors demanded a report on the defects uh units state status from the technomats Ordered that one of the servitors be dismantled and its components investigated. Turned to me to announce his decision. Takes a step towards him. Immediately the servitors, each and every one of them, step towards the Lord Captain in perfect unison. Their mimicry of his movements is frightening with frightening precision. The rogue trader halted and in place, and after moments thought waved his hand and after a moment's thought waved his hand and the servitors just as synchronously repeated the gesture as well and the lord captain turned quizzically to the technomats so did the servitors as if mocking him whatever the lord captain did it did an incline in the head a wave of the hand or a step to the side the defective units repeated it without a moment's delay or hesitation, like grotesque marionettes controlled by an unseen puppeteer. We observed this mime unfold distressed in distress battle bafflement uh, for nearly a minute until the servitors finally came to a stop. Not sensing any threat from them, the rogue trader approached with confidence. The Lord Captain examined the servitors. As high factotum, it was I who had prompted that the entire in inspection, and thus it was my duty to follow the Lord Captain. As we stepped closer, we noticed the f fascinating irregularities. The servitor's pupils, normal, normally still, were shaking wildly. Their bulging veins were pulsating under their copper collars inscribed with their past offenses. It was as if those mindless half-machines were locked in a perpetual state of extreme tension. A visibly shaken Technomat behind the pr proposed behind us proposed that the human souls had awakened within the servitors' bodies after a long slumber deep within their lobotomized brains. Formally bereft of intelligence, they had attained awareness, feeling, and understanding. After a pause, the Technomac uh, added that the servitors used to function properly 
and that no one had been able to explain the change in their behavior. His gaze, still trained on the motionless, but animated half machines, half people. The Lord Captain stepped away from the servitors, suddenly drew an iridescent blade, one, one I had seen before, and uh, as if following some unheard command, plunged it into the nearest servitor. I don't want to do that. I step away. All present held their breath, disturbed by the sight. We waited for the Lord Captain to speak. Um... Hmm. Demand a report on the defective unit status from the Technomats. Ordered that one of the servitors be disassembled and its components investigated. I think I'll do that. A group of Technomats hurried to the act on the Lord Captain's command. The servitor's mechanical parts separated in clicks and snaps and hisses. The sutures between the wrinkled pale flesh and its augments were laid disgustingly bare. We watched the Technomats do their work and could see every centimeter of the servitor's stiff muscle abounding with valves and cavities pierced by countless cords and tubes. The disassembly and analysis complete, the Technomats concurred. The unit was in working order. Nothing in the dis dissected body that lay before us could prove any insight into the reason behind the defects. I should make note of one of one more thing. At the moment, all the present all of us present discovered that not just the eyes, but the hands and heads of some of the servitors were now shaking too. It was as if the mechan mechanized servants were overcome with some primordial f terror. Now they wait for my next decree. Uh, demand a report on the defective units. Technomat's long-winded and detailed reports could have summarized the single key point. Despite the servitor's admirable behavior, they were still quite capable of carrying out tasks, and therefore the circumstances did not call for their termination. Fuck it, let's stab one of them. Heretical plus three. The movement of the blade sliced open the pale flesh. A wild howl washed over the cargo bay. We heard the screeching and crackling of servo motors as if uh, having regained the ability to feel pain the wounded servitor struggled to open its sewn mouth but all it could muster was a stifled moan of horror the lord captain's victim fell to the metal deck and all the other servitors came crashing down with it we all felt a grip of the otherworldly of an otherworldly bone chilling cold as I met the Technomat's fearsome, fearful gazes, I realized that none of those present had any explanation for what just happened. For what transpired. The engineer, Engine Seer Prime proceeded to the center of the spiral of servitor bodies, stood over them grimly, studying their lifeless faces, and spoke thus. This tech phenomenon warranted comprehensive study. Further investigation has been rendered impossible. Perhaps it was a trick of my imagination, but I thought I could... I caught a semblance of sorrow in his gaze in that moment. Lord Captain, seemingly not attached... Attaching any importance to the situation, sheathed the blade and left the cargo bay without a word. Well, shit. <laughs> oh, there's Adira. <laughs> Oh, uh, I found her. Uh, let's finish with this guy, though. Have you heard of the name Fiery Reckoning? From what I can tell, it was one of the void ships of some sort. There was a mention of it in one of Theodora's documents I found. Yeah, let's do that one. Janus thinks for a moment, pursing his lips in concentration. I'm afraid not... It is not immediately familiar to me, Lord Captain. Please allow me a moment. He starts rapidly tapping on the screen of his data slate. Hmm. Hmm. I say House von Valentius did indeed sign a contract with the owners of the vessel with the designation Fiery Reckoning. 
There are transactions, records of the ship picking up cargo from Kavaya Gamma. Uh, well, this is odd. The data log ends there. Apparently the ship had some interactions with one of the work ships on the industrial world. I beg your pardon, Lordship, but that is the extent of the ass assistance I can provide you in regarding this particular matter. Holy shit, I got a lot to ask of this guy. Mind me what it is you do on the ship. I know what he does. He is in charge. <laughs> let's let's hear him out. As high factotum, my duties encompass anything that might enrich you or your protectorate. I see it that supply, suppliers deliver their shipments on time, that our partners do not weasel their way out of promises, and all servants remember that the Emperor's grace can only be earned through toil for the good of the Von Valencia's dynasty. I also make arrangements to ensure that our hold receives less than thorough inspections uh, by port customs officers. Oh, and I find buyers where whatever you wish to sell. How did you come to serve on the ship? I came from Dargonus, your lordship. I have been a subject of your dynasty since birth, and I have always strived to be use of the great rogue trader. Alas, it is not my fate to be the primary heir of my own family due to my being 15th in line <laughs> for the title. So I decided not to stand in the way of those behind me in case they attempted to shorten the waiting list at my expense. While my brothers and sisters schemed against one another, I studied the exact sciences and mastered bookkeeping, the greatest art of the Adeptus Administrarium. I must admit that the accumulation of wealth, something one can control, is far more exciting than hunting, carousing, and the other traditional amusements of the noble my noble peers. What's it like? What was it like working with Theodora? Oh, now that's a tricky question, your lordship. Do, do you ask it to everyone knowing the, they risk losing their head should they let the ship uh, let slip a careless remark about your predecessor? I shall put it thus. Working with Lady Theodora was never boring and always profitable. The Imperium has billions of subjects, but very few do what they love and what they are best suited to. I would say Lady Theodora was one of the fortunate ones. She was a model rogue trader and surrounded herself with those who excelled at and loved their work. Hers was a rare talent indeed. I wish to know what you think about our fellow crew members. Keeping tabs on your subordinates, a wise move. Tell me who interests you and I shall endeavor to be as honest as possible. His eyes light up. He obviously eager to speak his mind. Tell me about Seneschal Abelard Wershinger. <laughs> That's not his last name. Uh, Lady Theodora managed to do what even the Imperial Navy could not. Teach Master Wersnier. Wersnier. Fuck me. I already forgot how to pronounce this fucking name, dude. <laughs> to carry out orders that the fundamentally disagrees with. I do not know the method she used, but the results is impressive. Having said that, there is something else you need to know, Lord Captain. Your Seneschal is capable of being something far greater than a mere conduit of your will. He possessed cun the cunning and experience to run the Protectorate passably while Lady Theodora was away. And that really is saying something. Keep an eye on that old officer. I say, or alternatively, turn him into a faithful ally. I'd like to hear your opinion about the former Master of Whispers. I hope I never see him set foot above aboard this vessel again, not even as a servitor. Although, he would be able to do at least some good that way. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has a clean to clean the latrines after all. His bloated face grows stern. He gives all quite a fright on the ill-fated day, Lord Captain. 
And still, to speak candidly, I never enjoyed Master Vodiger's company, but I believed him to be a man who knew how to do his job. Regrettably, I was mistaken. Turns out Conrad lacked the most important quality of a Master of Whispers, unwavering loyalty to the rogue traitor, and has and his failing came to light in the most deplorable manner. What do you think of the Vox Master? Ah, yes, the Voidborn. Uh, you know, in my family, we used to cr use such creatures as quarry whenever we were hunting. Mutants are a bane of humanity. An unseen tremor, oh, tumor, that threatens to end us all. But I digress. In the brief time, toil... Toleman, Toleman has spent as the Vox Master. I have not noticed any significant flaws in her character or anything that would make me question her professional qualities. Needless to say, she is very dig diligent, as if any vo void boy seeking to earn their master's affection. Uh, I believe you can trust her skills and her loyalty. I want to know more about the people who buy our plunder. Of course, Lord Captain, who interests you exactly? We must often deal with the followers of St. Derus. Derusus. The Explorators. And the Casabellica mission uh, <laughs> or emperor forgive us the fellowship of the void okay so there's only there's only four factions so actually selling to those guys the void guys might have been okay i but i'll probably go for the explorators because they sound cool uh what are the followers of saint Derusus acquire from us the Derusians still hope to bring the Coronis Expanse into the warm embrace of their faith, just as they, their flock hopes to receive the aid of their Derusian missionaries. Each crate of food, shipment of clothes, or box of medicine marked with your seal is a sign the road trader himself believes in the sex, sex uh, future success. Reverend Harmonious uh, is the first among the Derusians and the most often seen in Footfall's Grand Atrium. A gloomy fellow, but some almost believe him to be a saint. Tell me about the Explorators. Members of the Explorator... Cognizance Fleet, which has been roaming the Coronis Expanse for a good while now. Omnisaya knows what they are hoping to find. But their acolytes regular show, regularly show up on inhabited, uninha on inhabited worlds, seeking bits of sacred knowledge, tracking down mechanical relics, and sniffing out Xeno artifacts. If truth be told, supposedly they want to save the ignorant rabble from corruption. A tech priest named Oct Opticon Twenty Two does business with us on the fleet's behalf. He can be found at the docks on Footfall. Cool. I'm interested in the mission. Masters of the cold trade, immoral criminals, and notorious crooks to the last man. The mission is but one branch of the mafia, of this mafia gang that has taken root of the Calaxis sector. Where is that? Imperial sector located in the Sanctum Obscurus. Uh, next to the frontier region of the Coronix. Okay, so it's next door. <laughs> you can do business with them as long as you take the necessary precautions. They are led by Vladim Tokora, who recently appointed himself liege of the footfall. Of footfall. Of course, he is a trusted ally of the rogue trader Winterscale, but he will not refuse you. Another of emperors, another of the emperors anointed. If you wish to talk to Vladimir, uh, look for him at the Legion's Palace in Footfall. What about the Fellowship of the Void? 
emits a laugh-like gurgle. A pompous name, is it not? In truth, they are a gang of pirates who are forever squabbling over loot and territory. However, some of their little flotillas need supplies or can take away awkward cargo off our hands without asking questions. Of course, there is always a risk that these scoundrels will change their mind and attempt to board us instead. But so far, the micro macro cannons have managed to keep them in line. They say Riza, Riza, Claveria uh, speaks for the fellow on the fellowship's behalf. The Abdeptus Amasicus on Footfall is rumored to be her favorite haunt. Why are we giving away spoils to these people in the first place? To profit from them, of course. Most of the things you will find during expedition expeditions are complete junk to one such as yourself. But the less fortunate and affluent servants of the empire emperor think them treasures, especially when they are bestowed by the great rogue trader himself. Dersian Darusian fanatics and pirate cutthroats, Cabala Casabellica dealers and explorators none of them will refuse our help in the dark and trying times and there may come a time when we shall be the ones requiring aid and it would be beneficial to have allies to provide it i'm going to change the subject i would like to order sh the shipping and transportation of goods oh okay so i gotta find their Oh, wow, these guys have a really high ceiling for their levels, huh? Can I just... Oh, I can just access this from anywhere now? Oh, that's sick, actually. 7 to 10 damage, so that's pretty good. Noise suppression helmet. When the warrior kills an enemy in a one sell radius with a shot they gain plus one resolve until the end of combat that's kind of weird oh look at this fucking thing auto gun nice there's an axe we already have holy shit hack and slash and it inflicts bleeding nine to ten god damn no wonder that's so fucking Grants 12% dodge reduction to wears melee attack the ring. Oh, wow. Blinding grenade. A great sword? Yo, that's sick, dude. Fuck yeah. Metal. When the wear targets an ally with the bring it down ability for the first time in combat, that ally gains plus one action points. That's pretty good for me <laughs> but i cannot afford that no whatsoever um oh well now the fuel thing's up here two hundred dollars damn interesting I'll have to uh, hold off on that for a bit, but that's cool that I can just access that from anywhere. I would like to replace the painting of the Way Theodore in my chambers, hang my portrait instead. No, thank you. I wish to bol bolster my retinue with fighter skilled fighters. Rest assured, there are people of the most outstanding talents among the thousands of your crews. I will contact the overseers at once. And dialogue. What is this? My game just crashed. What the hell? A new challenge for me. Wow, I can create my own characters. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we'll close that. That's awesome. My retinue and I are in need of training. I will show you our sparring chambers at once. Yeah, we'll just take mine, I guess. Oh, reset everyone. To, oh, that's cool. I can respect with this guy too. Holy shit, this guy is so fucking useful. 
Oh my god, this guy is so fucking useful. What the hell? <laughs> He's like the most useful one on the goddamn ship. All right, well, that has been quite enough. Uh, next time we're going to talk to Adira finally. She has some special thing she needs to talk to us about. But yeah, it's been an hour, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fun edit, I'm sure. I'll see you in the next one.